policy that's essentially good for us and our customers and our shareholders, or we can just fight against it and eventually we're going to lose, and then it'll be even worse. It'll be some kind of command and control policy that's going to be very costly to us. So he got engaged in the game. I, I was out in, uh, in Cincinnati, which was then the corporate headquarters, it must be 15 years ago. He had me come out to talk uh, to his senior management. They didn't know what climate change was. They thought it was a conspiracy of the far left. And to talk to them, I brought Ron Green from MIT to talk about the science, um, to take them through. And he's actually been remarkably progressive. He testified, uh, Roger testifies regularly on Capitol Hill in favor of cap and trade. Not because he wants to drive up the costs for his rate payers and to reduce profits for his shareholders, but because he knows the alternative, that if it's not cap and trade, it's going to be some kind of regulatory approach that's going to be much more costly, is going to be even worse. So that's my advice whenever I'm talking with CEOs, um, is to get engaged in the game. Because there's more than one way to skin a cat. And if you leave government to its own devices, they won't do it in a way which is best and which is cheapest. Not just for private industry, but for all of us. So I think private, the private sector has a huge amount to contribute. Now in saying that, you'll notice what I'm recommending is what in the populist mood we're in and what our presidents sometimes refer to as sort of a negative activity. It's called lobbying. I don't think lobbying is negative at all. I think it's appalling that it's been demonized through this, the populism of the right and the left as if it were. It's a fundamental contribution in a democratic society with that perspective and that understanding, whether the lobbying is from the Natural Resources Defense Council, which is a green NGO, or it's from Duke Energy. It's a fundamental contribution to the process. You and I don't have the information to contribute what they do. But unfortunately, in this mood we're now in, and Tom knows more about than I do, of populism from both sides of the spectrum, um, there seems to be condemnation of that kind of activity. So let me ask uh, the final question here. Um, has to do with Massachusetts. Uh, obviously, Massachusetts sent a signal in the Senate race. Um, sort of send a signal in the other direction in uh, Massachusetts versus the EPA, right. which was decided uh, two years ago, where basically what Massachusetts did uh, was to sue the EPA, and the EPA had concluded um, this was under the Bush administration that uh, greenhouse gases uh, were not air pollutants. Um, and, uh, and the Supreme Court, uh, by a five to four margin, cited Massachusetts um, and concluded that uh, greenhouse gases were in fact air pollutants um, unless the EPA could show that they had nothing to do with global warming. So there was a contingency there. But is this ruling, and, and the EPA has done some things under the Obama administration, mm -hmm. is, is this a strong instrument or a weak instrument in terms of national policy as a means of addressing the problem? Well, unfortunately it's both, but I must first say that since you started out by saying you know nothing about this problem, you've demonstrated quite to the contrary. This is a problem you know nothing about. I hate to think about the areas of policy you know something about, but that's why. Right. Um, so there, there uh, is there, there's a whole other um, avenue of action in the United States that is going to happen, and it is a regulatory approach because it's uh, legally mandated under court decisions. So the Supreme Court decision turned it over to the Bush administration, which kicked it to the Obama administration, to decide whether or not carbon dioxide under the Clean Air Act, for a segment of the Clean Air Act called Criteria Air Pollutants, uh, whether or not carbon dioxide endangered public health and welfare. That's the key phrase. Now, during the, the um, I don't think this is letting the secrets out, during the transition period, I was somewhat involved, um, I argued strongly against the Obama administration um, when taking office, issuing an endangerment finding which would trigger regulation, both because I think on the basic legality, as I understood it from talking to legal scholars, didn't fundamentally make sense, and also because you would be triggering a kind of regulation which would be relatively ineffective, but highly costly for what it would accomplish. Everyone in the administration, the people who now populate the White House, would agree with what I just said. Except, they'd say one other thing, which is what won the day. And that is that, yes, you're right, it won't do much about CO2 emissions, and what it does, it will accomplish at an incredibly high cost, but it will 
looks so terrible that it'll scare the Congress and force them to do something sensible like a cap and trade system, which is what we really want. But to me, that's like saying to you that if you don't do what I say, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. Okay? Because this is ultimately going to hurt the Obama administration. It's going to hurt all of us because we're going to accomplish little. We're going to spend a lot of uh, economic resources on it. And it's going to produce precisely what the far right and the climate skeptics would like which is a poster child of the idiocy of climate regulation. Because the first time there's a regulation that affects lawnmowers and barbecue grills, everything that you've heard about, that's what you'll get. There's no choice. If it is regulated as a criteria air pollutant, this whole notion of these BAs and spells, don't worry, we won't go to the large sources. They don't have the legal authority to stay with only the large sources. They have to regulate across the board. I think it's going to be, I mean, pre former President Bush, I agree with him on this, he characterized it as it would be a regulatory trade wreck. And my view is that it will be. The irony is that EPA is doing everything they can to, although they're going to put the regulations in place, to put them in place gingerly, like not affecting small sources, I think it's below 50,000 tons of CO2 emissions per year. It's the, the Heritage Foundation, it's the groups on the right, that have already announced they will sue EPA, saying that under the Clean Air Act, you don't have that authority to do that. So, I mean, it's already playing out of precisely what I predicted. So I think it is a, my own opinion, is that it's a big mistake. Sorry.